Okay, so hello everyone. Happy Thursday and happy Halloween. Um, so uh, this is our weekly insider number 12. Um, and please remember that the recording of this call will be available on both our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. Um, please remember as well to ask your questions as Erica is po posting at the moment on our Menti channel for our Q&A session at the end of the of this uh, weekly insider. So without further ado, let's just start with the engineering department uh, with Luca. Please go ahead. Thank you, Angie. Hi, everybody. Happy Halloween. Today is uh, the day after one of the longest and uh, most interesting live streams we have ever had for the contents we presented. So if you haven't watched it in real time yesterday, make sure you check it out from our official YouTube channel because you cannot really miss this one. Uh, it was also our first quarterly live stream and uh, I'd like to say thank you to all the people that contributed to it. It was, as usual, a team effort, but in particular Angie, Lu Lucy, Linda, Marco did really great. And it was also the first time we had Alberto Garofalo, the director of research and engineering, taking part to a live stream. Uh, he presented uh, uh, the contents uh, of the Sidechain Alpha milestone, which was released last week and introduced us to beta, which is the next target in our timeline. Uh, so as announced during the live stream, we have a lot of cool topics on which the engineering department is currently focused, like epochs, the advanced uh, consensus for sidechains, these changes related to main chain to support backward transfers and more. The epochs topic in particular is a very important one. It's uh, one of the main components of the sidechain model because the life of a sidechain needs to be split in epochs where all the custom transactions can take place. And also it's where users can ask to withdraw their money. So they can ask for a backward transfer from sidechain to main chain. Uh, also, this is uh, very well explained in the videos we have been recording it. So if you haven't checked the video between uh, uh, Rolf and Rob, please check it out. There is also a new one that was just published between Rob and Alberto. So all those uh, withdrawal requests will then be collected in a certificate, which will, will be sent back to main chain. And the main chain will be able to agnostically accept the certificates coming from sidechains without following sidechains at all. And this is why our model is providing massive scalability. So just, just wanted to say that, and we are working on these things at the moment, but last week we had also had a, a, a Zendee software deprecation, which uh, went very well. It was on Saturday. Uh, we followed it together as usual. Uh, it was another uh, team effort, in particular Vano. I'd like to thank you because you helped the team a lot by sending all the test transactions from basically all the major exchanges right after the deprecation block was found. Thanks to this, we were able to realize immediately after the deprecation that three exchanges didn't upgrade the latest software re release. So we contacted them immediately, opening tickets on their respective customer support centers. And they all upgraded in a few hours, even if it was Saturday. So we saw that only minor issue very fast. And overall, it was another smooth uh, deprecation cycle. Um, I think uh, that is it uh, for today. We don't have uh, uh, Alberto on the call because he's traveling back to Italy, as well as I think uh, uh, Robert Rosario, unless they just, they just joined the call. So I would give it back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca, for the update. Uh, next one is Chronic with the infrastructure department updates. Hello, everybody. Um, so a little more detail on the deprecation. Um, we managed to upgrade all of the tracking server challenge nodes on uh, Friday last week, and we did some work under the hood to automate this task, which uh, so far has been um, done manually. And in the future, uh, we are making an effort to switch to infrastructure as code. Um, so for that, we uh, automated the process of upgrading the nodes, and uh, that worked nice and no issues there. 
Uh, then moving on into Saturday, we upgraded all of the other infrastructure like uh, block explorers. And um, we, we managed to upgrade the block explorers with uh, only 10 minutes of uh, partial downtimes. So there wasn't really a big impact on uh, light client wallet users. And um, over the course of the week, there was a pretty serious vulnerability in PHP um, published, which uh, we are fully mitigated against um, right now. And um, Alan and I, we are starting our next um, test cycle for the next NodeTracker server-side release, which uh, Alan can update more on. Passing to you, Alan. Okay, thanks, Karnak. Yeah, we've um, we've started the review process and what we've got coded so far in this next build. And some of those items are rolling up seven days worth of payments into one for each of the uh, node tracking systems. We're going to be working on uh, testing the API rate limiting. We've got stricter node authentication. Um, we're working on reconnects. There are some nodes that sometimes just start reconnecting multiple times per minute, and we're looking at detecting those and taking action on them. So with the, with the code review going on, we're starting the testing on testnet for each of these branches that we have, and hopefully we should be able to update um, potentially the weekend of the 8th or 9th and get the tracking servers updated at that point. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, guys. So next one would, would be Gustavo on the UX side. Hey, everyone. So we have Spencer for the help desk update. Please, Spencer. Hey, this is Spencer Whetstone reporting on the uh, help desk. <clears throat> the uh, numbers are uh, posted in the text version. And uh, I'll give them to you now. So we uh, most recently had uh, 58 items open, four items waiting for support, 51 items for the customer to respond. We've driven down our aged tickets down to three, which basically means we're closing out tickets that the customer has been unresponsive on. We had a little spike in those numbers due to false of popularity, but they've now been driven down to low single digits. And that's report from the service desk. Thank you. Thanks, Spencer. We also been busy going through our test cycle for Sphere Mobile, and I'm also working on developer workshop in collaboration with Jonas and the HD project. And that's all for us. Thank you. Okay, so next one would be uh, Jonas as well with the HDA uh, updates. Hey everyone. Um, for the HDE update, um, additionally to the news uh, I announced yesterday, there's not much to add. I'm currently mainly working on the bounty payout policy. Um, the MVP, as I said yesterday, is defined thus far. Uh, you will be able to find issues throughout several different repositories on our GitHub, and um, we will list all resources next to the Horizon code base. Um, and that's it for my section. Thank you, Jonas. Next one is Lucy on the marketing side. Hello, everyone. Happy Halloween. Um, so, and congrats to the team on a successful uh, live stream yesterday. Like Luke, Luke mentioned, it was our first quarterly live review, and it's packed with a ton of exciting uh, updates. Uh, again, you can watch the playback on our YouTube channel. Um, and then uh, just a reminder for the free node hosting competition, it has already received over 7,200 entries so far. It ends on November 15th. So please enter now, uh, you know, if you have not yet, and then share this competition to uh, increase the chance of winning. Okay, uh, and then also um, updates about the campaign about our sidechain. We published our second sidechain video last week with Rob and uh, Alberto explaining our sidechain alpha 
and what people can do and should do with it. Uh, it's a little long, like it's a little long, but very informative uh, video. So if you haven't watched yet, I strong, uh, strongly recommend uh, that you do that. Uh, and it's on our YouTube channel. And I'm working on the third video, which is scheduled to be released on Monday. Uh, the, th the third one will, will uh, feature Ralph. And then we are also updating all of our marketing assets with our, uh, with our new tagline and new site chain uh, development. Uh, and we are also in the process of contact, contacting our partner websites to update their description and introduction uh, on Horizon. And then also uh, our store, we have some new uh, products and new design added to the store. And today is the last day uh, for uh, for you to get the ten percent off store wide, so um, you know, grab some swag be before the before the sales gone. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, can you hear me? Okay, Lucy. Yes, very clearly. Okay, awesome. Hey, everyone. So I just wanted to reemphasize a little bit what Lucy said is. We have over almost 7,500 entries to the node competition, which is huge compared to what we've had in the past. In the past, the, our record was a, around 2,000 entries for a competition. So we've almost gone four times more than what we had about six, six months ago, which is huge growth. And that growth is even more sustained on Twitter, where if you take a look at the tweet about the node competition, by the end of today, we're, we're going to have a thousand retweets. That means a thousand people around the world have taken that tweet and retweeted it on their own uh, Twitter page. This is massive compared to what we used to get, the engagement we used to get. So when we had our um, most popular tweet, we had about 350 retweets and this was uh, i believe for the rebranding which is the biggest thing that we've done as a project um, in terms of publicity and now for a simple competition we have three to four times the engagement which i'm super proud of and i think that this is going to be really helpful not just for marketing but for all aspects of the business because when people are curious about if they should get involved in this project or not whether it's purchasing Zen or whether it's setting up a node or mining or developing on a side chain, they're going to be looking at our social media and saying, what kind of engagement are we getting? You know, how well do we connect with the community? And when they see the massive engagement and the engagement is growing every week, every month, uh, you know, they're, I think they're going to be much more likely to uh, partake in, in the horizon, horizon vision and mission. So super excited about that. Um, in addition to that, we released the Horizon Community Survey. So if you have a minute to fill it out or send it to some of your uh, Zen fans, like I mentioned on a couple of calls ago, we're, we want to do this every year to get a sense of the community and uh, how the community is changing year over year, what they want, what they don't like, and where we can improve. And that's it for me. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend and happy Halloween. Thank you, guys. Great, great update there. Okay, so uh, Rosario uh, and uh, Rob are on travel at the moment, uh, but I'll maybe pass the word to Rolf if you would like to add anything for the closing part. Yeah, thanks, Angie. Um, so I, as part of what I do, I go to many different meetups and uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency focused meetups uh, and talk to people and see what the, the different focus is. And... Uh, it's been a little difficult here in the Atlanta area because a lot of the uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain space, uh, despite being BitPay and stores and a few others uh, headquartered here, it's mostly on the development side of things, mostly on the, the blockchain, not cryptocurrency space. And I notice in going to the meetups that there's oftentimes a split between, we'll say, the, the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency folks and then the developers that uh, on the Ethereum side of things, they, they used uh, DeFi, so decentralized finances, uh, one of the words. And so it gives me time to think about what we're going through. And um, it takes work to do this, but we need to go through a mindset change as an organization because we're changing from a privacy-focused cryptocurrency to a platform with privacy capabilities. So we're adding on to the community. We're adding on to the people that are going to want to work with us. And one of the things, one of the questions 
that we're going to get asked more and more is why should people develop on Zen side chains instead of on Ethereum or other types of things like that? And that's a question that uh, you want to be able to have your version of the answer ready to hit it out, out of the park. Um, mine's not quite there yet, but uh, some of the things that go into my answer on that question is that these are completely configurable side chains. They aren't the main chain. So a successful distributed uh, application running on a side chain and having the interface be, for example, an app on the phone or something like that um, can doesn't slow down the main chain. So that's a big part of it. One of the reasons people are attracted to developing on Ethereum is they can just jump in and start doing it. So we want to make sure that we have all the tools and capabilities and explanations and wiki so that people can just start in, jump in and develop on our system. And uh, Alberta had to repeat this quite a few times to me before I got it. But the way that the economic modeling incentive is set up is so that uh, the developer of the actual sidechain application gets um, a percentage of the amount of funds that are transacted to the sidechain. Uh, so, and then the node operators get it a, as well. So there is uh, economic incentives designed all the way through um, for people to use the sidechains. And with Zen, already a, a tradable token that already has uh, a market determined price, um, people don't have to even think about doing, oh, well, I have a great idea that I want to bring to market. I'm going to have to form an organization, do an ICO, get investment funds, create a tradable token, get it on exchanges. Now, our organization does all that work for them. We do you know, all the marketing, all the back-end development, all the, all the support, all the interacting with exchanges. All developers have to do is come up with an idea and use our software development kit, which keeps improving and getting better, to put their idea into reality. So it's a much more low risk uh, way of doing things. Uh, so the mindset change is that we need to start talking in ways that these developers can understand and make them interested in what we're doing. And, and that takes work and it'll take time for all of us to do that. Uh, but it also allows us to go do additional marketing at other events where we really haven't had much of a presence, say different types of hackathons or uh, other things like that. And maybe in some cases like this, having an event like an upcoming hackathon uh, that we want to prepare for. And I still think we're a little bit away from that, but we want to be able to come and say, look, during this hackathon, we want you to develop a sidechain application that accomplishes such and such. And we have to think through, okay, do they have all the tools? Do they have the assistance? Do they have the, uh, the, the sidechain node app? Do they have the uh, documentation and everything that enables people to do that? Or will they won't run into a frustration exercise? Um, just like many successful, uh, fast-growing companies, we want to eat our own dog food on that. So we wanted to develop some of our uh, some applications, some sidechain applications that are consumer-focused, and we can do that on our GitHub and, and start doing those. And that's also where the Horizon Developer Environment comes in, because uh, developing on, on a sidechain application, if we do two or three of them that seem like good ideas, that seem should to work well um, and uh, would work well within the specific way that our sidechains and main chains are constructed, that could allow us to uh, generate a lot of interest on the developer side of things. So anyways, work towards doing that work. Uh, you know, everybody on the team uh, should be part of that mindset change and part of the thinking. Um, and uh, I've got some ideas that I'm going to bounce off some, some other folks later on. Uh, but I think we have a wonderful opportunity here uh, to continue to expand uh, our presence and reach within the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. Um, and it's uh, enjoyable to see the progress that we're making. So thank you. Appreciate it, Angie. Thank you, Ralph. Um, not sure if Rosario can speak at the moment. Um, but I'll, I'll then pass the word to uh, Lucy for the Q&A session. Yeah, we've got quite a few uh, questions. So the top one question is, is there a possibility that a, set, a side chain collapse? If yes, what will happen to the Zen coin inside the side chain? Will it burn and supply will be reduced? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, in fact, that's one of the one things that uh, Alberto brought up as 
uh, in designing the extended model. And I'm assuming this extended model was compared uh, yesterday, but it's the, the real cross-chain uh, transfer protocol advancement that's new and different from anything in the industry. Um, and so a sidechain collapse, um, what if you know everybody who's running nodes or applications on the sidechain, uh, it stops working, or what if there's a, a bug? So there's a number of protections built into both the main chain and into the initialization um, uh, function uh, of the sidechain on the main chain that protects against that. So one of the things is uh, we can't bring more Zen back to the main chain than was sent to the side chain. So that's a, a good protection. Uh, and the second one is that there is an initial uh, developer, uh, and I might not quite get this right because we're going to set it up in a way that it, it's uh, non-threatening to the people that use the, the side chain, but there's uh, a developer key that can be used so that in worst case, if there is a sidechain clap, the uh, Zen can be returned to the main chain. Thank yeah, you very, all. Very well said, Rolf. Just wanted to add uh, that uh, uh, in our terminology, it will be not uh, as uh, it was uh, written in the question, yeah, collapsed. It, it will be, uh, it can be declared, for example, closed, or uh, there, we will have multiple status statuses cover. Uh, this is going to be very well explained uh, in the in the new model extension, on which we have been working in stilt mode for the past months. And uh, anyway, I, what I wanted to rate 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 on uh, is that the fact uh, that users will always have a, a way to uh, withdraw uh, their money back to main chain from the side chain, from the collapsed side chain, let me say, to the main chain, even in the worst case scenario. So we are going to provide that protection uh, that, that will always uh, be a, an opportunity for users. Thank you, Luca. Um, so we've got another question. Uh, the second top question is, are sidechains operated exclusively, uh, exclusively by their creator and team? What work, if any, do supernodes perform in sidechains? Yeah, and I can take that one again. Um, so the supernodes are uh, designed, and, and we have said this consistently and from the very beginning, uh, that the supernodes are going to be the node operators that are expected to run the side chains that keep the main chain and and horizon running. So um, that means that the functions that we were looking to put onto the main chain that we've had uh, development and thought about, which includes uh, governance and voting, uh, which longer term will be uh, the the uh, twenty percent of the new block reward that goes to the foundation right now, the way that that gets spent is going to be determined by the governance and voting system that's going to be running on one of the side chains, and that side chain is expected to be run on supernodes. Supernodes will only get compensated if they are, are running that side chain application. Uh, same thing with the uh, node tracking and payment system that is going to be running on a side chain that keep that tracks the secure nodes and super nodes um, and uh, pays them from the uh, twenty percent of the block reward uh, that is designated for super nodes and secure nodes. So super nodes will have to run that side chain application to get compensated. Um, and we've talked about moving privacy from the main chain to a privacy side chain. Uh, because we're privacy focused, the Horizon protocol would be running at least one of these uh, privacy uh, side chains. And so that would be the third uh, side chain application that super nodes would be running. So there's no additional compensation for running those side chain applications, at least in my concept of the design. But as things go towards uh, software development and production, sometimes change. But that, that's why super nodes get paid. Uh, and that's why they're expected to have more computing and disk and um, memory capabilities. Um, so, sorry, that's a long answer to the question. So then anybody can make money uh, on other side chains. Uh, so if uh, I develop a sidechain and I want to get uh, people to run the application, uh, then I can 
uh, we'll have a, a website, a marketplace or whatever, where I can advertise to everybody who's out there running Zen Notes and say, hey, I want you to, to run my side chain. And uh, here's the uh, here's the requirements. Here's what the percentage of payouts on the cross-chain transactions are going to be. Um, and then I get people to sign up and, and run that sidechain. I could see that if we have a lot of different people writing sidechain applications at some point in the future, uh, for those of y'all who are, are miners or, or node operators, you go to these different websites that rank the profitability of uh, mining or running master nodes on, on different algorithms. And I could see the same thing for sidechains applications happening uh, at an extended point in the future. So that's where the money-making opportunity is to run the sidechain applications and get compensated from the percentage of the cross-chain transactions that get worked into uh, the overall protocol of the sidechain. And this will also allow a massive decentralization, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have a video coming out in the next weeks uh, with Rolf, actually, uh, speaking exactly about this topic. So looking forward to that. And uh, I see Barry asked a question in the uh, Weekly Insider, so I'm, I'm going to just jump on answering that one. If somebody uh, wanted to build a gambling app, uh, like Satoshi Dice, is it better to do that on the main chain or a side chain? You know, it can be built either on the main chain or side chain would be uh, my opinion of that. But I think there would be better performance uh, and more options and better capabilities, more ease of use if it were built on a side chain. Because uh, there can be a lot more, uh, the block time on side chains, for example, would be uh, able to be a lot faster than the block times on the main chain. They could be uh, more lightweight and designed so that there's other functions such as having uh, usernames uh, or other uh, or other things that make it easier to interact quickly uh, in that type of environment. So my uh, expectation would be if there was a, a gambling application that somebody wanted to develop, and there probably will be because people like to do gambling, uh, the sidechain is definitely the place to do it. Thank you so much, Ralph. Um, this question was actually our, uh, our next uh, uh, most folded question. So you already did it. Thank you so much. I think that's all the questions of the day. Uh, back to you, Andrew. Well, thank you. Uh, I believe this was a great session. Uh, thank you, everybody, for hosting and attending our uh, Weekly Insider. Uh, welcome to the new members of this. So hopefully we will like to see you in the next coming weeks as well uh, for more uh, super exciting updates. And wish you all a great weekend and have a happy day. So bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. bye.